we were all kidding when we said we were just getting started. Never give up, just go harder. Sack! Let's wear cheese, gotta sacrifice it all. Gotta do it. Touchdown! Corbin in the five. Yeah! Champs two times in a row. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Mike Vrabel Show. I'm in the Bet MGM studio here at Nissan Stadium. The head coach, Mike Vrabel, joins us from St. Thomas Sports Park. And Michael, congratulations. 48 hours for it to soak in. The Titans with a second straight AFC South championship. A title that means a lot to a whole lot of people in this part of the world. Absolutely. I mean, it should mean a lot to our fans, our players, and you know, our ownership and, and, and our entire organization. It's it's a group effort and, you know, we, we got a lot of work to, to still do, but uh, it is a great accomplishment. It's, you know, our first goal and we set out to, to win the division. So, you know, now we got to keep going. All right, time to jump into our six pack of plays from the victory over the Miami Dolphins. We've got two different six packs. We'll start in the first half. How about fourth straight game with a sack? Danico Autry. Yeah, they're going to be good. I want you to see the pocket here, though, Mike. You know what I mean? It's a, it seems like a covered sack, but this is exactly what we had to make him do is reset his feet, look around, and not give him opportunities to step up and, and find lanes to throw the football. You can see that this was uh, a well-executed rush right there, and uh, Danico is the one that ends up getting the, the sack there. Danico Autry now with nine sacks on the year. Defense and special teams setting up the offense with field position. And then the Titans get a big play, a big completion. It's Ryan Tannehill to A.J. Brown for 25. Yeah, it, you know, I mean, that, that complimentary football was a thing of beauty. Uh, great pocket right there. And I thought A.J. might have been able to tightrope. We've seen him tightrope down that sideline before. But you can see the pocket there. Ryan is clean. A lot of places to throw the football. And, you know, he put it in a great spot. And, you know, and A.J. Had a, had a huge challenge of, Obviously, with those those corners, but you know this is a, a good, great throw and catch. You choose to go for it later in that drive on fourth down, and you put it in your quarterback's hands. Yeah, you know we like the matchup, and you know we feel good about it. And you can see, you know, Prue coming in there, give him a help. There's a there's a great surge right there, and um, did feel good about it. And uh, you know we just got to make sure we're getting in there, protecting our quarterback. Ryan Tannehill continues to do a great job in short yardage. And so that's why when you got to the one yard line, everybody thinks it's going to be Tannehill again, and it's not. Well, it, it, it's Swaim. It's Jeff Swaim. And, you know, I thought this was a great call. And, you know, this may or may not have been run by the, the tight, Titans head coach uh, back in the day. So we dug this one up out of the archives, and I think Swaim did it better than I did. All right, so Jeff Swain with the touchdown catch for the Titans there. 7 nothing lead. Defense comes through with another big play as Tonga Vailoa has the ball slip out of his hands due to pressure. Yeah, you know what I mean? And that's the, the risk you run when you when you want to do the RPO game and, and get the quarterback to, to pull it out of there and, and try to throw. And this type of uh, conditions, I mean, we knew that field position and, and taking care of the football would would be at a premium, and uh, we, we executed our plan uh, perfectly. Let's just not fight over it, okay, boys? Great hustle to the recovery from Elijah Molden. Sets up a field goal, makes it 10-0. It's 10-3 late in the first half when the Titans go on their best drive of the day, and it ends with Deontay Foreman. Yeah, what a great run. You know, guys get him covered up. He's in and back out. And, you know, here's the biggest thing right there, Nick Westbrook. And, uh, you know, Akina, and he's he's down there finishing, but you can see these guys, they get him covered up. Deontay gets back inside, 
sets up the block, gets back outside, taking care of that football. You can see, you know, he's aware of it. And that's all we ask those guys to do is, is do everything they can do to be aware of taking care of the football. Mike, Deontay's really confident and consistent with the ball right now in his hands. Well, he's a, he's a good runner. I mean, he's a natural runner. I mean, this is a player that was, you know, is very talented and, you know, he's gaining a lot of confidence and then he wants to do well. You could see it in his face. You could see it in his preparation and, you know, being here and, and helping us win means a lot. And that, uh, that makes me feel good. And that, that makes me uh, excited. So before we go to break, we have to come up with what is the most important part of the show, setting up our next segment. It's time for the Delta Dental. Already, I just wanted to enjoy myself, Mike. I didn't know it was going to be this quick in the show. We wanted to get it in here because the people love it. They demand it. And so Delta Dental is right here for Can You Guess This Titan? We'll go to break, and when we come back, we will see if the head coach improves on what has been a great run for him lately, guessing the Titans players. That and a lot more coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show. It's been a popular game for many years. You can play along at home. Delta Dentals, can you guess this Titan? The head coach, Mike Vrabel, loves this part of the show. Can he guess this Titan? Michael, who is it? To all our fans out there playing along, if you guess the Buster Screen, you are correct. Is it Daryl Frank Screen? It is. Daryl Frank, better known as Buster Screen, who continues to play good football for the Titans in the secondary. Mike Vrabel, what do you like about Buster Screen? Well, he loves football. He was looking for an opportunity, and, and we gave him one. And, you know, he's done everything that we've asked him to do. You know, it seems like he's been here for a while, doesn't it, Mike? I just get that sense that he's one of us. And, you know, he's never been to the playoffs, Mike. Had numerous guys come up to me the last couple of days, like, Coach, I've never played on a winning team. I've never been in the playoffs. And, you know, I, I'm excited for him, but, but we got a lot of work to do here this week. Okay. Buster Screen is our Delta Dental. Can you guess the Titan tonight? When we come back, we're going to take a look at a six-pack from the second half of the Titans' victory over the Miami Dolphins. The head coach, Mike Vrabel, it's his show. We continue with him after this. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio. I'm Mike Keith. The head coach, Mike Vrabel, is at St. Thomas Sports Park as we bring you this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. A second six-pack from the second half. Mike, let's start off with a little defense. How about some Harold Landry and sack number 12? Well, you can see, again, the entire front right there. You see Bud with the speed to power. Uh, Harold being able to set this guy up kind of gives him a little speed, a little dip. You know, and there's Jeffrey and Bud collapsing the pocket and not allowing uh, Tua to step up. And, you know, that that's really what it takes. It takes four guys working together when you send four and, you know, try to salt the guy in the middle of the pocket. Get another sack in the fourth quarter. First career sack for Kyle Pekka, who comes with a hard rush and nearly gets a takeaway. Yeah, we were hoping for, you know, I mean, a little trickeration here. They were trying to just do anything they could to get some points. and. He's hustling to the football. Give credit to the guys in the back end for, for getting everybody covered and not, you know, not freaking out, not rushing up in there, but, you know, letting this thing develop. And, you know, Pecco just hustled and, and is finishing. And you can see him kind of reach out there to, you know, try to attack the football. And I thought that that was a huge play. We just got to get on him. You know what I mean? We got to be every time that ball's on the ground, we, it has to be ours. The Dolphins fumbled four times. Titans only got on one. And so you want to improve that this week without a doubt. It would be great if we could. All right, next play, how about a little Deontay Foreman taking it up the middle himself? Yep, and uh, this is something that, that we liked here. You know, they were blitzing us, and they didn't have a safety in the middle of the field. I thought this was a great call. You know, the biggest thing about this is just Deontay learning from, from that mistake in the Patriots game when he, you know, broke away and, you know, had guys coming after him, and, you know, they were able to pop that ball out of here. And you can see now right here, he kind of feels them coming, and, you know, he's got that thing clawed and he's got the wrist above the elbow and it's locked in. And, you know, that that's that's what excites me is that a guy that made a mistake a few weeks ago has come back and has corrected it and, uh, you know, doing things to help us win. He's got it high and tight right there. 
All right, so the Titans get a touchdown at the end of this drive. It comes via a pass. It's another tight end touchdown. You know, again, the pressure that they were coming with, I thought that this was a great call with, with a, uh, you know, a bootleg and, and Ferk slipped out of there. They had, uh, you can know, see the safety there, 29, put his eyes in the backfield. And then, you know, Ryan being able to just get out of the pocket and give him a, a great ball, an easy ball to catch. And, you know, guys were excited. Good game for Ferkser overall, three catches, 24 yards. Next up, more defense, and welcome back, David Long. Yeah, flying around. You know, it's good to see him and, and be out there. And, you know, they're, you know, Bud again getting some pressure. And, you know, Dave, when you're around the football, good things happen, Mike. You've been around this game a lot of years, and guys that are always around the football, you know, good things usually happen to them. And, you know, the ball's not round. It takes funny bounces. And so, you know, David was there to capitalize on it. Sets up Dontrell Hilliard to end the scoring. His first seven carries, Dontrell just six yards. This one went for 39 and six points. Yeah, great cut. You know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, again, when you can when you can get through that first wave against Blitz Zero, they don't have a safety back there. You know, those uh, play those games, win those prizes, I guess. <laughs> Dontrell Hilliard showing off that. 4-3 something speed as he takes it to the house. Titans win 34 to 3 over the Miami Dolphins to move to 11 and 5 on the season. And that gets the Titans in a position that win this one, Michael, take Houston and you're the number 1 seed in the AFC. Yeah, I mean winning takes care of everything. Um you know, I had a coach who used to tell me that and so that's what our focus is. It's focused on winning and uh preparing to win and you know Houston's been been playing really well. You know, they beat us, obviously. We understand that. They scored in their first three possessions. Um, we fumbled it. We, we, we threw it to them. And, uh, you know, they've won two out of their last three. You know, this is a very fast, opportunistic defense that, that creates a lot of turnovers. But when the Tennessee Titans take care of the football, you are a very hard team to beat, Mike. Yep, and I try. I keep trying to, you know, explain that to our guys. And, you know, we sat here last week and we had keys, and you know, we nailed every one of those keys. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to them about it again and just show them how critical those things are that we we come up with keys. And you know, when we play that way, you know, we are, um, you know, we're hard to beat. Titans coaching those guys up. And when we come back, Amy Wells has a Titans file about a Titans coach who has a lot of people that are very proud of him, including someone that I work with closely every single week. Stay tuned for the Titans Files on the Mike Vrabel Show. Welcome you back to the Mike Vrabel Show. Teachers will tell you that their greatest source of pride is when they see their students succeed as life goes on. Well, coaches are the exact same way with their former players, especially when the former players go on to become coaches. For Titans Radio's Dave McGinnis, he is a member of the Titans staff who is one of his former players who has gone on to become an excellent coach in his own right. And in 2021 and into 2022, he's had to do it by using a lot of different guys. In this week's Titans Files, Amy Wells takes a look at the relationship and the pride of Dave McGinnis and Rob Moore. He knew. Over 20 years ago, he knew. Dave McGinnis was the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. His star receiver was Rob Moore. Moore was in the midst of a 12-year career where he caught over 600 passes and was a pro bowler. And yet Dave McGinnis knew. Coach Mack knew that if Rob Moore wanted to coach after his playing career ended, he would be just as successful. Speed out the break. If he shows up that early, you say, yeah, you, I think you gotta take that. Hey, fellas, we gotta go, man. This, this right here, this is, this is this bad right here. This bad ball. He was one of the most highly competitive guys I've ever coached. 
and I've been around a lot of highly competitive guys in my 31 years of coaching. But he did it with such grace. You know how some guys are able to compete with intensity, but they got a real kind of aura to them about just being smooth and, and, and graceful with what they do. That was Rob Moore. No doubt in my mind, he was going to be an excellent coach if that's what he chose to do. This was a guy that coaches could implicitly trust, and this was a guy, more importantly, that the locker room trusted. Rob Moore started as a high school coach, then became a junior college coach, and then moved on to college coaching before advancing to the NFL. He paid his dues, and he stayed in the National Football League because he can connect with a receiver who's headed to the Hall of Fame, a wideout who's desperately trying to make a roster, and every wide receiver in between. Either go down the middle of them if you don't want to be outside, but be somewhere on them, on his frame. You got what I'm saying? He commands instant respect. And you can just tell, just with what's going on with this receiver group, let's take this year. He's got some very different guys as far as it, even their talent levels from top to bottom, and especially what he's gone through this year, you know, having to, to, to reintroduce and to teach new people and bring them in. But he's always able to connect with those guys, and I think that's really, really important. That's what you look for as a head coach, is someone that can connect with their players and still at the same time be able to make the distinction between player and coach. He's a very insightful human being. He gets it. He is one of those guys that was supremely blessed athletically, but he doesn't expect everybody to be that supremely blessed athletically. But what he does expect and can tell them is how to hone their craft and how to increase their value by work. If you watch a Titans practice, you see all of the wide receivers gathered around Rob Moore during periods where they're off. The conversations focus on all aspects of the job, and every receiver gets something out of these sessions. But Rob Moore, he gets a lot back. There's implicit trust between player and coach, and they know that what he is telling them on a daily basis is going to help them. He, in turn, wants feedback from them. That's why you see those constant conversations. Anytime you see coaches that are in constant conversation with their players, it's because there's feedback going back and forth. And it can't only be, you listen, I talk as a coach. It has to be, let me hear what you have to say, and then let me help you. And then if, if we both agree, then we'll go on this path. If not, let's find out why we don't agree and we'll work something out. But trust is the word. That's what, that's what you know. When you're seeing that on a practice field, what you're looking at is implicit trust between player and coach. Just like I had Ron Rivera, just like I had Mike Singletary, you knew that if they eventually were going to hang up the pads, that if they wanted to get into coaching, they could add a lot to it. I knew that watching Rob Moore immediately when I was with him. A lot of super football coaches on this Titans staff. Proud to have Rob Moore as one of them as the Titans wide receiver coach. When we return, the head coach returns. Mike Vrabel's Nissan keys to victory at Houston next on the Mike Vrabel Show. We welcome you back to the Mike Vrabel Show. Time for the head coach's Nissan keys to success. All right, Michael, let's start with key number one. It's about taking care of the football, no surprise. Well, I mean, I think you kind of segued into that pretty good. I think that that's, uh, that's been the key. You see, when we take care of it, you know, we can extend drives and we can go down there and put points on the board. And, and if we don't, we reserve the right to punt and do what we did the other day and, and pin them down there and play field position and, and let our defense work and force them to drive the football. So th there's certainly some, some evidence of, of good football. And if we can take care of it and play complimentary, you know, I like where we're headed. Since the bye, the Titans defense has played fast and physical. More of that, eh? Yeah, and I think that there's a swarm mentality that these guys, uh, <clears throat> they love what they're doing. They love who they do it with. And, and they all kind of seem to uh, want to try to race to the football. And, and that's a great mentality to have. And so you know, I just want to continue that. I like watching them play. Uh, it, it's a great view uh, from where I stand. And, uh, and I can feel it. I can feel the speed and the excitement that they're playing with. In Sunday's game, the Titans were able to win field position through the punts and the punt returns. You want that again against these talented Texans on special teams. Yeah, they, they do have a, a very good special teams unit. They, they're fast and, you know, their kickoff return unit, uh, you know, is averaging almost 30 yards a return. 
So that'll be a huge key. And obviously, you know, we're familiar with Desmond and, and the strength in which he can return punt. But, you know, I thought that was a great um, example last week. They they averaged 30 yards a net and we were over 40. So, you know, we were gaining yardage every time we punted and, and they were losing it. So um, I thought Chet came up, caught punts, you know, was 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 aggressive, but but smart with the football. And, you know, we just need everybody playing the same way. And I think we left a little bit out there, to be honest with you. And the bottom line is so many guys chipped in and that went over Miami. That's what you want to see more of again this weekend in Houston. Yeah, we want every guy that's active, every 48 players, all of them to, to have a role in the game and, and to be able to go out there and do stuff to, uh, that helps us win. That's the idea. Mike, good luck this weekend. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, Titans and the Texans coming up Sunday at noon from NRG Stadium. You can listen to us on Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone in Nashville, beginning at 11 a.m. For the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.